It's July 6, 2025, and out here right off the coast of the Carolinas, we have Tropical Storm Chantel right before it's about to make landfall in northeastern South Carolina. We can currently see some very, very deep convection in the storm, which indicates some strengthening and organizing. So right now it's still taking advantage of those very, very warm ocean temperatures. Now the most recent aircraft reconnaissance flight by the Hurricane Hunters has actually picked up an area of up to 50 mile an hour wind. So it looks like the likelihood of this storm land falling as a 50 to 55 mile an hour tropical storm is likely. And then we can see here on our cone of uncertainty graphic that a landfall early this morning is still likely and we actually see an area of very large wind fields which will likely affect anywhere from Charleston to Wilmington, North Carolina. And after landfall, it appears that the storm will deteriorate pretty quickly into a tropical depression. And at that point, it will just become a large rainmaker, and the main threat will be flash flooding. And it appears that in the very early morning hours today, starting around 2 a.m., it appears that most of the coasts of the Carolinas will be engulfed in tropical storm winds. Now, with these winds, structural damage is not really expected, but we will expect to see a lot of downed trees, widespread power outages, and any loose objects could be blown away. Now the surge with Tropical Storm Chantel is actually expected to be fairly isolated and it's only expected to be up to two feet in height and it's expected to stand from the South Santee River all the way up into Surf City, North Carolina. Now the main threat with this storm is of course going to be the flash flooding risk that it will bring and pretty much anywhere east of Charleston, South Carolina and east of Charlotte, North Carolina can expect to see lots of rainfall and a risk for flash flooding with the greatest risk of flash flooding extending from Charleston, then up the I-95 corridor, then into Raleigh. And this risk for flash flooding will stick around all the way through Tuesday this week. This is a more visualized look of how much rainfall some areas will get. And we can see that on the storm's path, we could expect to see some isolated areas that receive more than five inches in a very short amount of time with a increased corridor up here going through I-95 and rally, but the most focused precip is gonna be along the coast, spanning from the northeastern corner of South Carolina all the way up into the northeastern corner of North Carolina. So the flash flooding risk out here is going to be very real and is likely going to be the biggest risk associated with this storm. Now at this point, the track of Chantel is pretty much set in stone. After it makes landfall in northeastern South Carolina early this morning today, it will very likely take a pretty hard right turn and exit in the northeastern corner of North Carolina before it kind of rides the eastern coast of the U.S. all the way up into New England before it goes all the way out into the Atlantic. And it should exit land back into the ocean around Tuesday. Now it's going to cause Tropical Storm Chantel to take this pretty abrupt right turn back out into the Atlantic around Tuesday. It's actually going to be this pretty large trough up here in Canada, which is basically going to act like a vacuum and it's going to suck it back out into sea. Another thing to note is that there will be a conditional risk of a couple of weak tornadoes with the storms in the outer bands of Tropical Storm Chantel, and this risk will be focused in southeastern North Carolina. Another thing to note is that we do have a slight risk of severe weather out here in the central plains today, and then this is going to be surrounded by a marginal risk of severe weather, which spans pretty much from the entire central plains all the way into the southern plains into even parts of the upper plains. Then we do have a bit of a marginal risk of severe weather up here in the deep northeast in Maine. And of course, we have our severe weather, which will be expected with Tropical Storm Chantel. And then there is some interesting frontal activity, which will span from the Midwest back into the Central Plains, which I think could bring a couple of isolated severe storms. Today's threat is going to be mostly a wind threat with a 15% hatched region of severe winds, possibly being around 70 miles an hour, if not in excess of that. Then we have a 5% risk of severe winds, which spans pretty much all the way from the top of our central plains back into our southern plains. We also have a isolated 5% risk of severe winds up here in northeastern Maine, which will be fueled by the conditional threat of a couple of organized storms. And our hail threat is going to be pretty much in the same area as our wind threat. We could see some large hail out here in the central plains, and that's going to be highlighted by a 15% hatched region of a elevated hail risk. Then this is also going to be surrounded by a 5% risk of hail which also extends all the way through the central plains into the southern plains. So hail around two inches in diameter is definitely a possibility out here. And then we also have a pretty conditional 2% tornado risk out here, which would be basically confined to some parts of western Nebraska. And this will be for some spin-up tornadoes along a mesoscale convective system. And of course, we'll have that pretty formidable threat of flash flooding out here with Tropical Storm Chantel in the Carolinas. But unfortunately, it does appear that our risk of flash flooding will persist out here in Texas, which is really a very unfortunate thing with the amount of rainfall 
this region has gotten in the past couple of days. However, it does appear that most of the larger swaths of rainfall will be a little bit north and west of our main area that has experienced catastrophic flooding over the past couple of days near San Antonio, Austin, and Kerrville, Texas. But in the areas that will experience some rain, it looks like there could be a pretty widespread area of up to three to five inches of rain, which we dropped in a pretty short amount of time. And this will be all brought by, believe it or not, the remnants of Tropical Storm Barry. Here's our simulated reflectivity from our Central Plains main risk area today. And we can see a couple of storms fire off in the mid-afternoon before it pretty quickly turns into a mesoscale convective line of storms by the evening hours. And the main threat with this will be some hail, particularly in the earlier stages of its life when these storms will be a bit more discreet. But when it's in this more linear mode like this, it will definitely be more severe gust, which could be around 70 miles an hour. And then there will be the threat of some spin-up tornadoes in the more northern portion of our line, where our wind vectors are going to be more parallel to our line of storms, which could possibly spin up some tornadoes in there. And it also appears that there could be a cluster of storms, which will start in southern Kansas and push into Oklahoma, which could possibly be strong. And then these would bring a mostly wind threat. Looking at our southern plains risk area, it appears that we could have some organized severe storm activity out here in parts of western Texas and eastern New Mexico, brought by the clashing of our air masses out here. And then starting a little after midday, it looks like there could be pretty decent storm coverage all the way across a cold front, which will actually turn into a stall front as we go throughout the day. And because of the decent instability and moisture, I definitely think if a couple of these storms can cluster, because a couple of these will have some low pressure systems behind them, I do think there could be an isolated threat of severe storms pretty much anywhere along this line with a increased threat right here in southern Kansas and northern Oklahoma. And then of course the main threat with all these storms along this line would be some isolated severe winds. And then our last area of concern that's not tropical is going to be up here in Maine where we could see a couple of organized storms which could bring that threat for severe winds. Here is a weather sounding from our main risk area and we can see that we have a pretty elongated hodograph and our low level SRH is going to be low, our low level shear is going to be low, our bulk shear is going to be quite high at around 50 knots. The threshold for very organized storms is 40 knots, so definitely some organized storms out here. We also see some varying in our winds, which will help to organize those storms a lot, which would also help to feel that threat of hail. Also feeling that threat of hail is a tad bit of Cape near a freezing layer, decent mid-level lapse rates around 7.8 Celsius, decreasing per kilometer. Our lowest cloud level is going to be a bit high for a tornado threat to be super robust, but because of the cloud tops extending in front of our storms, I think this could be brought down a little bit to where it could support the threat of some spin-up tornadoes along the line. We see some very favorable mixing for a severe wind threat. And then we also see two points in the high 50s, which would be enough to support all hazards of severe weather out here in this region. We do see a moderately unstable environment, but a not super unstable environment nearing 2000 Cape. And our precipital water and downdraft Cape is not gonna be super impressive. But our relative humidity is gonna be somewhat low that it could increase evaporative cooling and thus increase that threat of severe winds. So in summary, I think that out here in our Central Plains risk area, in parts of western Kansas and western Nebraska, I do think the threat of severe gust up to 70 miles an hour is going to be the main concern with the conditional threat for some large hail and possibly a spin-up tornado or two along that mesoscale convective system. And here's the weather sounding from our southern plains risk area, and we're actually going to see a lot of the same that we saw in our central plains risk area. We're going to see pretty decent bulk shear for some organized storms. We're going to see a higher lowest cloud level which would support that threat for severe winds. We're going to see some drier loft, which would also help to support that threat for severe winds. And we're going to see a moist enough environment, which would also support that threat for severe winds. The main threat down here would be some hail and severe winds. Mainly, we do see a decent bit of cape near our freezing layer, and our mid-level lapse rates are going to be 8.5 Celsius decrease in per kilometer, which would help to increase that hail threat with a couple of organized storms. Then our low-level lapse rates are going to be pretty high, which would be conducive or some severe winds, then our cape is going to be nearing 3,000, so definitely enough for some strong storms. Our precipital water is going to be 1.25, coupled with a downdraft cape of 1,400, which would also help to support that threat of severe winds. So mostly out here in the southern plains, I think, with any storms that could get organized, the main threat would be severe winds and some possibly large hail.